In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace and love of God our Father and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, to prepare our hearts to enter into the sacred mysteries, let us together call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that purifying us by the sacred practice of penance, you may lead us in sincerity of heart to obtain the holy things to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Genesis. Israel loved Joseph best of all his sons, for he was the child of his old age, and he had made him a long tunic. When his brothers saw that their father loved him best of all his sons, they hated him, so much that they would not even greet him. One day, when his brothers had gone to pasture their father's flocks at Shechem, Israel said to Joseph, your brothers, you know, are tending our flocks at Shechem. Get ready, I will send you to them. So Joseph went after his brothers and caught up with them at Dothan. They noticed him from a distance. Before he came up to them, they plotted to kill him. They said to one another, here comes that master dreamer. Come on, let us kill him and throw him into one of the cisterns here. We could say that a wild beast devoured him. We shall then see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to save him from their hands, saying, we must not take his life. Instead of shedding blood, he continued, just throw him into that cistern there in the desert, but do not kill him outright. His purpose was to rescue him from their hands and return him to his father. So when Joseph came up to them, they stripped him of the long tunic he had on. Then they took him and threw him into the cistern, which was empty and dry. They then sat down to their meal. Looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, their camels laden with gum, balm, and resin to be taken down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What is to be gained by killing our brother and concealing his blood? Rather, let us sell him to these Ishmaelites instead of doing away with him ourselves. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh. His brothers agreed. They sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. The word of the Lord. God. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. When the Lord called down a famine on the land, and, the ru and ruined the crop that sustained them. He sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. Remember the marvels the man had done. They had weighed him down with fetters, and he was bound with chains till his prediction came to pass, and the word of the Lord proved him true. The, Lord the, Lord. the king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard and put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it and built a tower. Then he leased it to the tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized him, seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and the third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected had become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done and is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this, his parables, they knew he was speaking about them. And although they were attempting to arrest him, they feared the crowds, for they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. This morning, our first reading, we hear the beginning of the story of Joseph, favorite son of the Israelite patriarch Jacob. Joseph's brothers, jealous of his favorite son's status, sell him into slavery. Jesus tells the parable of the tenants in the today's gospel. The chief priests and the Pharisees were attempting to arrest Jesus, but they didn't because they feared the crowd for they regarded him a prophet. The stone that the builders rejected has indeed become the cornerstone. Have we built our house upon our Lord Jesus Christ, which will last eternally, or on earthly pursuits, such as wealth or pride, which over time wither away? Let us not discover too late that our cornerstone, or that we think is our cornerstone, crumbles when put to the test of the final judgment. The question we must ask today, is Jesus the cornerstone of our lives? Is Jesus the cornerstone of our lives? Is our faith built upon the rock? The rock that lasts forever. And so my dear brothers and sisters, may we reflect upon seriously this question today. Is he the cornerstone of our lives? Or is something else, the cornerstone. My dear brothers and sisters, as we reflect you know, the word penance in the opening collect, this weekend we're going to see the importance of almsgiving, fasting, prayer, and penance. They serve a beautiful purpose. And the hint is in this weekend's gospel. So I'd encourage you to read it. 
pay attention to Jesus' actions in the gospel, for that is the very reason and the purpose of our Lenten almsgiving, fasting, prayer, and penance. It is important, my dear brothers and sisters, today on this Friday, that we reflect upon the sacred heart of Jesus and how beautiful we have the opportunity to gather, to pray stations, the opportunity to receive Jesus in Holy Communion, the opportunity for the sacrament of reconciliation where we encounter the heart of Jesus. And with God's grace, our hearts are configured to his, the cornerstone. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, may we place our faith, our trust, and our hope in the Lord. And may we allow ourselves to enter into the heart of Christ and to allow the heart of Christ to enter us as we go about our daily lives. Let us turn now to our loving Father with our prayers and petitions. For members of the church throughout the world, may the outpouring of the Holy Spirit sanctify each of us in our daily lives. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may God grant them understanding hearts. We pray. For all who are burdened by sin, may they find forgiveness and mercy in the arms of our loving Savior. We pray. For all of us gathered here in this holy place, may the Holy Spirit bestow upon us the gift of piety, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us in faith, may they find peace in the kingdom of heaven, we pray. Lord, for the intention of the holy sacrifice of the mass being offered this morning for the intention of Uncle John, we pray. Merciful Father, we humbly ask you to accept our prayers in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For to the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. 
with humble spirit and contrite heart, accepted by you, Lord, and I accept that it pleases you, Lord God. Wash away, O Lord, my iniquities and cleanse me from my many sins. pray, my brothers and sisters, in my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May your merciful grace prepare your servants, O God, for the worthy celebration of these mysteries and lead them to it by a devout way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, for the Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you. As without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep my soul safe for eternal life. body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. body of Christ. The 
body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal salvation, we pray, O Lord, that we may set our course so well as to attain the redemption you promised through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Grant your people, O Lord, we pray, health of mind and body that by constancy and good deeds, they may always merit the defense of your protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
and may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do that, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.